What's going on everybody? Today we are going to address a question that we've been seeing a ton of from our members, from the public, talking about Daiwa MQ reels. I'm seeing the question all the time, hey, there's a Daiwa BG MQ, and then there's the new Daiwa Ballistic MQ, and then you step up from that, and then there's the Saltist MQ. And I think people are getting analysis paralysis. They keep looking at the three and between $200 and $300 on these three MQ series of reels, people are asking, which one's better than the other? Which one should I go with? Should I go with the ballistic? Should I jump up to the saltist? Can I make do with the MQ? And I think people are getting lost in the minutia. There are features that change between these three MQ series of reels by Daiwa, but the base is the same. They are MQ reels. They have a great foundation with that MQ concept and that compact body. And this video today is gonna to be diving into the different features of all three reels and kind of assess which one is best under certain situations. So let's start with the workhorse, with the ground zero for MQ reels. I think that bang for buck, the BG MQ probably offers the most of what inshore anglers are looking for. And just to kind of start with some of the specs, we grab the boxes for each. So I personally own a couple 3000 BG MQs. I've got my Saltus 3000 and soon to be the Ballistic MQ for a very specific purpose. But the 3000 model, I do feel that when it comes to the BG MQ and the Saltus MQ, in their 3000 and 4000 series, this DXH is denoting their faster gear ratio. So you get a 6.2 to one gear ratio, which equates to about 36.8 inches retrieved per full turn of the handle. Intro guys like to have the speed. They just want that option at their discretion. Um, if you want to have a setup that brings in slightly slower speed, it's a matter of an inch or two difference. So I don't really think it makes a difference, but if it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it is my perspective. So I think that for the BGMQ and the Saltist MQ, that 3000 size is right in the money because it's really not that much bigger than a 2500 in the big scheme of things in this MQ platform. So continuing to look at some of the features, obviously the MQ body design, which we have talked about many, many times, the short version is, this is an aluminum body and it's very compact. And on top of that, they use a main gear that is absolutely massive. It is 20% bigger than some of their other main gears that they use in their LT series, even in the regular original BG series, the black and gold. This main gear is bigger, and it's bigger than you know the industry standard, if you will. Um, some other manufacturers, their main gear is a lot smaller. The bigger main gear is going to translate to more power or more of like a winching power when you're under a load. So it's going to feel more fluid. You're not going to have to, you're not going to feel as much resistance when you're winding down on a fish or when you're working lures, but keeping it all compact like that in an aluminum body, make sure that that main gear, that main shaft and the pinion gear here are all in perfect alignment. There's not going to be any flex. There's not going to be any compromise in an aluminum bodied product. So that's really why I'm a huge fan of it. These retail for about $200. And I think that getting, you got six ball bearings, you got great speed, you've got uh, relatively lightweight. For a 3000 size, it's 9.3. Now, to be truthful, some anglers might look at that and say, 9.3, mm, that's a little on the heavier side for me. And you know what? That's okay. I think every fisherman is different. Me personally, I do a combination of fishing the open grass flats for redfish. I'll fish around mangroves for big snook. And I do feel that an aluminum body offers me that versatility that some of the lighter weight reels that we're going to get to talking about might not be as uh, suited for that type of situation. So for $200 to get the speed, to get a moderate weight class, and something overall that, I mean, this is incredibly smooth. I mean, I've had this reel for about eight months now, and you can kind of still see that thing is going. There's been no modification to this reel whatsoever, and it's caught me big reds, big snook. I mean, everything. I'm, uh, this has been a great workhorse reel for me at $200. So when we work our way down the line, the next reel at about $240 is the Ballistic MQ. Now, a lot of you guys out there have been really excited about this model. The Ballistic MQ was teased back at ICAST 2021. A lot of people have been waiting for it, and uh, Dai was trying to get reels out to everybody. They're kind of coming out in small batches and limited supply right now, but it's a hot item that people have been waiting for. And the biggest reason is because of the weight. So these new Ballistic MQs are made out of Daiwa's Zion V material. 
it's very, very similar to their, their upper class Zion. It's virtually one and the same. The difference is that this particular type of composite material allows them to make uh, different sizes and more series of reels out of this type of high density carbon composite and still keep it in a lightweight body because that's what a lot of guys are looking for. One thing that's really important to note is a lot of inshore guys, they prioritize weight on their spinning reels. They think that lighter weight is better across the board. So you don't have fatigue when you're fishing all day and you're working lures. And when you look at the weight, particularly of this BGMQ, I'm sorry, the Ballistic MQ 2500, the 2500 size comes in at 6.9 ounces. That's two and a half ounces lighter than the BGMQ and the Saltist MQ. And people might see that right off the bat and say, wow, I gotta go with the lightweight body. Again, I think it's about application, guys. If you're the type of person to fish the flats all day long, open water scenarios, and you're casting a thousand times a day, you're wade fishing, you're fishing for trout and potholes and redfish on the edge of uh, like sandbars and grass flats, tailing, I think this is an excellent option. Not only because it's lightweight, but still you get the MQ body frame that we're talking about, you get the bigger main gear, and you get some lightweight features. When you compare it to the BGMQ, the BGMQ has a standard air rotor, just a standard graphite rotor, lightweight, but you know, pretty durable overall, and it has a strong one-piece wire bail. The whole purpose, once you start jumping up in this MQ, MQ series, is that you're gonna get a Zion V air rotor, so even lighter in weight, and you're gonna get an air bail. Yes, that does help with the overall weight of the reel itself, but I think what it really translates to is fluidity when you turn the handle. By having a lighter weight rotor and a lightweight bale, when this rotor rotates, there's less effort involved. So yes, you have perfect alignment with your gears, your main gear, your pinion, your main shaft, it's all tight and compact, but then when you go to turn the handle on this Zion material, it's going to feel very fluid when you turn the handle. So from a comfort standpoint, from a ooh and ah standpoint, I think the Ballistic MQ is a nice upgrade to the BGMQ for those guys that want that light finesse approach. Can this reel do what this reel does? Yes. Is one better than the other? That's the major question. Well, for me personally, before we jump into the Saltist MQ, I own a BGMQ and a Saltist MQ, both in the 3000 size. I will be adding a Ballistic MQ to my arsenal, but for a very specific purpose. If I want to fish, like I said, around mangroves, docks, submerged structure for some bigger fish that might dog me and take me into that structure, I'm a little more willing to lean on an aluminum bodied product like these two than to lean on a carbon composite material. Now, is that to say this won't get it done? Sure. I have a Tatula LT, which is kind of a step down from the ballistic. It doesn't have mag seal, might have one or two different bearings, but it works. But there are many times that I've hooked up to big fish on the Tatula that I have wished that I had an aluminum body product because the rigidity and the uncompromising strength of aluminum can't be contested. If I were fishing open water scenarios, that's really when I'm gonna look at the Ballistic MQ. So that's kind of the baseline between these two before we jump into the Saltist MQ, is take into serious consideration what your approach is as an angler. Where are you fishing? What are you targeting? What is the intended application of this reel? And you'll start to see that as you jump up from these features, you get more bells and whistles when you start getting into the higher tier series of uh, MQ reels. To finish off the Ballistic, let's talk about some of the other features that are packed into this. So yes, made out of the Zion V material, lightweight. The 2500 size in the Ballistic MQ is the higher gear ratio. So you're gonna get that 6.2 to one gear ratio and you're gonna get 34 and a half inches per turn. Now that's two inches per turn less than the BGMQ and the Saltist MQ 3000. Why? Even though they're both high gear speed, the diameter of the rotor and the size of the spool is greater on the 3000s. So every full rotation is gonna pick up a little more line on the 3000s. So that's something to keep in mind, even though this is the high speed model, picks up 34 and a half inches. That's probably more than you need to be honest, um, but it might not pick up as much as some of these other uh, MQ series in the 3000 size model. So aside from Zion V, 
and uh, the gear speed we're looking at what's not listed on the box forgive me like i mentioned before the zion air bale i'm sorry the zion air rotor and the air bale keeps that fluidity of the reel when when you're turning the handle so it just feels really smooth and i'd say the coup de gras that everybody's really excited about is mag seal uh, everybody likes mag seal it's it's it does have its place. I think that it does a great job at providing a chemical barrier to the anti-reverse clutch mechanism. We won't be able to see it here in this video without tearing the reel down all the way. But when you take off this rotor, there's this bearing inside of all these reels. It's called the anti-reverse clutch bearing. On the MQ series, what's really nice is that they got rid of this anti-reverse feature, this instant anti-reverse switch that you guys are probably familiar with. This is to help prevent saltwater intrusion, which is what a lot of saltwater guys are worried about. They're worried about that, that old switch being an entry point for saltwater. You don't have to worry about that on any of these MQ series of reels. And as saltwater guys, we don't really need to be able to back play fish. We'll rely on our drag and the rod to do all the work when fighting a fish. But this anti-reverse inside of a reel, think of it as kind of the supercomputer, if you will. If that were to get compromised, this anti-reverse bearing, then when you go to set the hook on a fish, this handle could turn backwards. So it's very important to protect that part of the reel. And I think it's an oversight um, that a lot of manufacturers don't think to uh, talk about. It's always addressed in the construction of reels, but it's not verbally talked about in, in videos like this. So what MagSeal is doing is it's a ferrofluid that's added above the anti-reverse clutch. I have a great video in detail showing this where we break down a Daiwa Fuego with MagSeal and I talk about exactly what it's protecting. Now, MagSeal is great. It does an excellent job of creating a barrier around that anti-reverse clutch bearing. But here's the thing, on the MQ series of reels, the way that they seal MQ series of reels, they have a threaded cup that goes over top of the plate. And that threaded cup has a rubber washer under like a rubber gasket underneath it. That threaded down cup on top is already an excellent means of protecting that anti-reverse clutch. The mag seal is an added bonus. That's what you, that's what you guys need to keep in mind. Mag seal isn't so much protecting the side plate and the main gear. It's protecting that supercomputer, if you will. It's protecting that anti-reverse bearing. So is it necessary in the MQ series of reels? Debatable. I think that it's a nice feature to have, especially if you're going to be really rugged on your gear and you're taking a lot of boat spray, or if you're going to go wade fishing, I think that it's a nice feature to have in the long term, but they're already sealed so well physically that some might argue that it, it may or may not be necessary. So if it's important to you as an angler in the type of fishing that you do, you start seeing that mag sealed fluid in the ballistic MQ and higher in Daiwa series of reels. So let's take a minute and let's talk about drag on reels. I think this is really interesting. The BGMQ drag capacity on the 3000 is 22 pounds of drag. The drag capacity on the Ballistic MQ is 22 pounds of drag. The Saltist MQ is 22 pounds of drag. That's a lot of drag, guys. That, that is more than likely more than you will ever need. In inshore fishing, even if you're fishing around heavy structure, try putting eight to 10 pounds of drag or pressure on a reel, and you'll be amazed at how strong that really is. But what I find interesting is that if you have the ability to really crank down your drag on these smaller, low profile inshore spinning reels, and if you feel the need to go there and you wanna go the distance, you wanna go and fish around heavier structure, I do think that you'll probably get the most out of that in going with an aluminum bodied product because aluminum is never going to flex, it's never gonna bend, it's always gonna maintain its shape, it's rock solid. So if you want to push the limits on drag, although I don't think you're ever going to get that high, but if you are going to run 8 to 10 pounds of drag, potentially, you're probably better suited going with these two series of reels, the BGMQ and the Saltist MQ, because they are aluminum body. And then now we're going to talk about the Saltist MQ. Guys, this reel actually won uh, ICAST 2021 Best Saltwater Reel in its class. And for good reason. This is the best balance of all worlds, I think, for the price range. The Saltist MQs come in at right around $300 in that $2,500, $3,000, and $4,000 size. I went with the $3,000 model, like I mentioned, because I like a little, I like that balance between the $2,500 and $4,000 size. I like the increased line capacity. I like the faster gear ratio, the faster line pickup. 
But what you're getting out of the Saltist MQ is kind of a hybrid of features between the BG MQ and the Ballistic MQ. So when we talked about the BG MQ, we talked about the workhorse aspect, the best bang for buck. At about $200, you got uncompromising aluminum body. You still get the MQ frame, great physical sealing all throughout the body, and you've got a rigid one-piece wire bale, and it's very, very smooth. This is overall, I think, the best value out of the bunch, but when you jump up in the different series, you start getting kind of a different approach with the ballistic MQ. You got lighter weight design. You've got an air rotor. You've got an air bale. You've got mag seal. You've got some fancier bells and whistles that are great for the shallow water, open, expansive flats kind of fisherman. And then you get to the Saltist MQ. This is a hybrid, if you will. You've got an aluminum body on the Saltist MQ, but you have a Zion air rotor and an air bale. And we're going to get to this puppy here in a minute because that's probably my favorite thing on the reel. So one thing I think is interesting is Daiwa incorporates their air rotor and their air bale for different reasons. Ideally, to reduce weight in the reel. Weight reduction is important to a fisherman. But in the case of the Saltist MQ, even though it has an air rotor and air bale, when you look at the weights... Now, this is a 2,500 size box, so these specs aren't quite accurate, but the 3,000 size Saltist MQ and the 3,000 size BG MQ are right around the same weight. This is 9.3 ounces, and I believe the Saltist MQ 3000 is 9.4. You're probably thinking, wow, they're the same weight. Why do we need an air, air rotor, air bale? The reason, like I mentioned with the Ballistic MQ, is fluidity. You are not going to feel any resistance whatsoever when that rotor counter rotates around the spool. It helps with fluidity and feel, and to a fisherman, it's an ooh and ah feature. That's what I, that's what I like to say. Very, very durable, very lightweight, but it kind of helps cut the overall aluminum body that the BG ends up off, the BGMQ ends up offering. You're still able to get right around the same weight, but you get a little bit smoother feel in the drivetrain when you're turning the handle. So when you jump up into the Saltist MQ, you are also going to get mag seal, like what's included on the Ballistic MQ. You're going to have that threaded cup that holds that plate in place underneath the rotor, where that ferrofluid is for the mag seal. Again, already very well sealed. I think there are nine seals throughout the body of every single MQ series of reels. Handle entry point, threaded plate, from the top down, you've got your waterproof drag system. This is on every single series of MQ reels. Your waterproof drag with that lipped cup here, take the spool off. Something I think is really cool, this is on every single MQ series of reel. You see that little rubber tab right there? Let's call it like a low friction seal, okay? So when the main shaft goes up and down through that seal, it does provide basic physical preliminary protection for water working it's down the main shaft, but it's not constricting the drivetrain. So it's not going to feel like you really got to get it going for it to be smooth. Like some other reels that are only focused on physical sealing, this is a great balance of not only do you have physical sealing, but you still have that smoothness that a lot of fishermen are looking for. I mean, you, that's kind of subjective, but it's something important to us as fishermen. Everyone wants a smooth reel that is also very well sealed. And I think you're going to get that in all the series of these MQ reels. You're just going to get some added features when you jump to the ballistic and you jump to the Saltist MQ. Now, the final thing about the Saltist MQ, the thing that sticks out like a sore thumb, but I love it, is this aluminum round knob that they incorporated uh, on the Saltist MQ. So this aluminum round knob, Daiwa actually incorporates on other reels in other markets throughout the world. They call it an ARK or aluminum round knob. Well, they incorporated this round knob here on the Saltist MQ in every single size, in their 2,500, all the way up to their like 14,000 and bigger for like big yellowfin tuna and offshore stuff. And I really like it. For those of you guys that have fished with a round knob before, you end up having a little bit better control. It's a little more ergonomic to the touch. I think some people that are fishing with these smaller eye-shaped knobs, you're really kind of grabbing it with just a couple fingers. You're not really grabbing it with your whole handle. You can't really get your whole grip on there. Um, and that's fine if you're just fishing open water scenarios, but if you're going for bigger fish or you're fishing vertically, let's say you're going to bounce a power prawn on a bigger jig head around a bridge and you hook into a monster snook or a 50 pound tarpon or a cobia, 
it's probably gonna feel more comfortable when you can grab onto this whole ball handle and start winching down on that fish. This is really what guys call a power knob, okay? Well, let's just call it a round aluminum knob. It's much more comfortable. And this piece right here, if you were to buy it separately and try to manually put it on to a BGMQ or a Ballistic MQ, it'd be like 50 or 60 bucks. This puppy is pretty expensive. So this is a nice feature to add onto the Soltist MQ. I think it's appropriately fit for this family of reels because these reels are kind of meant to either fish open water scenarios or docks or mangroves or deep creeks with submerged structure, I think it can kind of do it all. And that is the reason why I think that this reel won best saltwater reel at uh, ICAST 2021, because it is a jack of all trades. You've got nice features, some fluidity aspects with the air rotor and air bale. You've got this nice smooth aluminum round knob and you have mag seal and you have an aluminum body. So you don't ever have to worry about potentially if it were to drop, a plastic body design, whether it's a ballistic or a fuego, it's plastic. It's a high carbon composite material. There's always the tendency, potential for something to chip. Although unlikely, it is it is a reality to keep in mind whether you're fishing with aluminum material or carbon composite, the durabilities are very different between these materials. So that's it guys. I know this was a long video. There's a lot of details in this video, but we want to give you the objective overview of these different series of MQ reels. Everyone wants to know which one is the best between the BGMQ and the Saltist MQ. And I got to tell you, it's not a matter of best overall. It's a matter of best fit for certain applications. And I hope this video explained a lot of that to you guys. Leave any comments down below. I love to hear the feedback. I wanna know if you guys have any questions about any of these particular reels. Let us know what kind of fishing you're doing in your backyard. And if you guys wanna pick up any of these products, we have them available at our online tackle shop, fishstrong.com. They go really quick. So guys, head on over there and pick one up before we're out of them. And if you're new to Salt Strong, just know we're the best inshore fishing club in America that teaches you how to find and catch all kinds of inshore game fish. You can save a ton of money on your tackle and you meet a lot of awesome new friends. So if that's for you guys, head over to saltstrong.com and we will see you in the Insider Family soon.